And uh, yesterday evening, approximately 1645 or 445 Eastern time on 11 February, NORAD detected a radar contact in Canadian airspace, uh, approximately 70 or so miles north of the United States border. We began tracking that radar contact, and it when became clear it was unknown, uh, following normal NORAD procedures, it was not talking to the Federal Aviation Administration, no squawk, and approaching our air defense identification zone. I scrambled F-15 fighters from Portland, Oregon, along with a KC-135 tanker support from Fairchild Air Force Base, in Washington, to go investigate to identify what the radar contact was. At 1800 Eastern or 6 p.m. Eastern, the radar track crossed into the United States sovereign airspace. At 7.04 Eastern time, the F-15s with their tanker support were on station to investigate. We continued to investigate. What's important to point out, this is near dark, uh, within a half hour, 45 minutes of dark. We continue to investigate to identify, locate the object. We were unsuccessful. It's also important to point out in this part of the United States, uh, we did not have data link or queuing like we had had before. Data link allows the radars on the ground to share information to the fighters airborne, allowing them to queue their sensors and their visual acuity in an attempt to visually identify the track. At sunset, we were unable to find the track. Also, our radar uh, operators lost the track on radar, and the FAA was never tracking the radar. Therefore, that's why we called it an anomaly, because we weren't able to identify it. Several hours later, overnight, we began seeing an intermittent radar contact east of the position in Montana as it approached Wisconsin. At that point, we developed a game plan once we started seeing another radar contact to go investigate. It's likely, but we have not confirmed that the track that we saw in Wisconsin was likely the same track in Montana. We elected to scramble with uh, the best position to intercept if, if we needed to engage with the lowest collateral damage. And that was in the eastern portion of Wisconsin, just prior to Lake Michigan, when the fighters became uh, on the, uh, the track of interest at that time. We monitored the track of interest as it passed over uh, Lake Michigan. Uh, we assessed that it was no threat, physical threat, military threat, physical infrastructure. That's my assessment, it continues to be today. However, at this point, we still have an unknown, and it forces a broader discussion about what is this object that's in our U.S. Uh, sovereign airspace. It's within our Federal Aviation Administration airspace, not providing any communications, not providing any notice that could potentially, excuse me, potentially help us deconflict, and therefore we wanted to investigate further. Uh, we did. Uh, it tracked across the upper peninsula of Michigan. Uh, we were cleared to engage the target in eastern uh, upper peninsula of Michigan uh, overland and ultimately down uh, the object at this point, uh, about 15 nautical miles east of the upper peninsula in Lake Huron. Uh, what we saw is an object that uh, began uh, drifting uh, potentially, uh, most likely landed in Canadian waters in Lake Huron, and we have ongoing recovery operations with Coast Guard assets uh, moving towards uh, this area. Well, I'm not going to categorize them as balloons. We're calling them objects for a reason. Uh, certainly the event off the South Carolina coast uh, for the Chinese spy balloon, that was clearly a balloon. These are objects. Uh, I am uh, not able to categorize how they stay aloft. It could be a gaseous uh, type of uh, uh, balloon inside a structure, or it could be some type of a propulsion system. But clearly, they're, uh, they're able to stay aloft. I would be hesitant to, and urge you not to uh, attribute it to any specific country. We don't know. That's why it's so critical to get our hands on these so that we can further assess and analyze what they are. 
I believe this is the first time within United States of America airspace that NORAD or United States Northern Command has taken kinetic action against an airborne object. Because we have not yet been able to definitively assess what these recent objects are, we have acted out of an abundance of caution to protect our security and interests. The spy balloon from the PRC was of course different in that we knew precisely what it was. Um, these most recent objects do not pose a kinetic military threat, but their path in proximity to sensitive DOD sites and the altitude that they were flying could be a hazard to civilian aviation and, and thus raised concerns. Again, as we have said, we do not assess that the recent objects pose any direct threat to people on the ground, and we are laser focused on confirming their nature and purpose, including through intensive efforts to collect debris in the remote locations where they have landed after being shot down. We are taking this very much on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, each operation has, has been different, um, and we will certainly keep you updated as we continue to learn more about these objects and the PRC balloon and what that means for us going forward.